Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for joining me once again. It's a special day for me. It is my birthday today. I'm 26 years young and I wanted to jump on here. I've done this a couple years in a row where I actually do film a podcast on my birthday. So I thought I'd do the same thing and keep that tradition going. I love adding value. My highest uh, value uh, in life is coaching. So I love coaching. I see this as coaching, adding value to you guys. So I wanted to share with you guys the 15 most potent lessons that I've learned in my life so far that have really moved the needle for me, really helped me grow and evolve in life from my business to my relationship, to my health, to my mental health, uh, and all the above. So hopefully you guys get some value from this. These are my top 15 lessons of life so far as a young 26 year old, and I hope you guys get value from it. So before I do start guys, if you do have the time to spend three seconds, invest three seconds of your time to like this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and share this with a friend at the end if you get value from it. And uh, if you comment down below, I do respond to every single comment. It is me commenting as well. So if you want to leave a comment down below, that would be fantastic. Let's roll through it, guys. So first lesson that I've got, and I got this quite early and I'm very grateful that I did, but always be investing into yourself to become the best version of you because you do not get in life what you want. You get in life who you are. If you don't have the life that you want right now, whether it be with your finances or your business or your relationship or your health or whatever it may be, the reason you don't have it is you do not deserve it. You are not the person, the energy, the leader. You don't have the traits, the skills, the mindset that deserves the things that you want. So if you want more, you've got to become more. You've got to invest into yourself. So please, even if you don't get anything else from this podcast, just always be investing into yourself. You're listening to a podcast right now, so you're obviously in that mindset to a degree, which is fantastic. So make sure you're always doing it. Always be seeking out the answers that you need or want to have the life that you want. If you wanna learn how to increase your sales, learn how to market, learn how to sell better, learn how to hire better, better uh, team members. If you're not showing up as the best version of you and really reaching your full potential from your level of focus and discipline and follow through and attitude and standards, then work on you, work on your shit, rewire your beliefs, hang around the right people, do the inner healing work and all the above. So make sure you're just constantly working on you. I would suggest just as a little, uh, little framework that I use or a little system that I use is I do three events per year and events might be courses or physical events, like a seminar or a course or an online uh, course, something like that. So I do three of those per year. So every three months, I'll do some form of a seminar or course or online course or something like that. I read books every single day. So I do between 20 to 30 pages of reading every single day. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less, but I consistently on average do between 20 to 30 pages of reading per day. And I listen to podcasts every single day. So when I drive, I barely listen to music. I probably listen to music 5% of the time, 95% of the time, it's an audio book or a podcast. So that is just my little, I guess, way of having uh, my growth scheduled in. And sometimes when I don't do the events, I have a one-on-one -on -one coach. So again, I go through different ebbs and flows of when I'm doing that. Sometimes it's more learning from the books, sometimes it's the courses, sometimes it's something else, but that's just a rough schedule of what I use for my self-development, my self-growth. So take something of that, if you will. Number two, make sure you are healing from your past wounds. They are causing you to be triggered and less authentic or more unauthentic. So when you're triggered, and I go through this quite deep in my programs that I teach, but, oh, very deep in those programs. But when you're triggered, it's revealing a wound or a trauma that you haven't healed through yet. So if you've had pain, which we all have in your childhood, in your upbringing, and you get triggered, which everyone does. There are wounds and traumas there that have been set off. And when you're triggered, your ego comes out to protect those wounds and therefore you're more egocentric. So you're less authentic, you're more egocentric. So when you're triggered, it reveals wounds, you haven't healed through and therefore when you're triggered, your ego comes up. That's when you get defensive, that's when you attack, that's when you blame, that's when you shut off, that's when you curl up into a ball, that's when you go to alcohol, to drinking, uh, to stimulus, to social media, whatever it may be. So do the inner healing work so you can be more authentic less egocentric and your life will be better. Next step is number three, find your purpose and chase it relentlessly. Now, purpose is an interesting topic because I have these people, I've seen different videos on this and different coaches and people speak about it. They're like, it doesn't matter about your purpose, stop thinking about it, don't chase it, it'll just reveal itself. And I agree with that to a degree, but 
It's like if you want to date someone, if you want to have a beautiful relationship, yes, it's very romanticized and very, uh, I guess, pedestaled that you might, you'll find it when you're not looking for it. You'll bump into the right person at the right place and the eyes will connect and all these fireworks will go everywhere and it's the right person for you. But that's nice when it happens. Well, what, what if it doesn't happen like that? Then, because it, ne- it normally takes time to anything you do in life, you've got to put effort into it. You can't just say, I want to have a beautiful relationship and not go on any dates or not put yourself out there or not go to places where you could meet people that are highly likely to be the people that you want to be with. So you've got to put effort into it. So I actually have a perfect purpose formula, which step-by-step shows you and reveals where your purpose is and what your purpose is. So I have a formula for doing that. I do that through my work. If you're interested in that, send me a DM or hit me up. But find your purpose, chase it relentlessly. Because you'll see, I think the last lesson on this list is something about how life doesn't matter to a degree and the things we achieve doesn't matter. So get when you find your purpose and you have meaning and you have direction and you've got clarity on who you are, what you love, what you want to do, you'll do things because you're inspired to do it. You don't need motivation to do shit. You want to do it. It's like right now, it's 6.30 a.m. on a Sunday on my birthday. I'm filming a podcast because I want to do it. I'm inspired to do this. No one had to text me. No one had to check in with me. No one had to motivate me to do it. I'm doing this because this is aligned with my purpose. So when I find when you find your purpose and then set goals and create a life around that and you commercialize your purpose, which is a process I take people through, it is very, very cool, very meaningful. You have a you have a, a life that's fulfilling to you. So let's keep moving forward. Number four, this was a big one for me. My depression and and anxiety is not solved by medication. It is solved by doing the inner work, looking after my health, and putting myself first. Now, this is a huge conversation and this is a podcast on its own. I've done podcasts on this already, but depression and anxiety is not cured by medications. They, they, medications only fix symptoms. They don't fix the cause. If you've got a broken arm, you take a a painkiller to numb the pain. That's what painkillers are doing. They're taking, or that's what medications are doing. They're taking away the symptom of the pain. You still need to go fix the arm though. You need to readjust, put it in a cast. You need to fix the root cause of the pain. So medications, in my view, in my experience of my life and my clients, it only fixes symptoms. It doesn't fix the cause. So I have, again, I have a process I go through how to solve this for people, but by doing inner work, working on you, healing your traumas, rewiring your beliefs, looking after your health, prioritizing your own needs, your own values, your own wants, and your own desires, filling up your cup so you can pour from a full cup, which is one of our next steps or lessons. Uh, That's how you overcome that. So for me, medication and anxiety is not solved through medication. It's through doing the inner work. It's looking after your health, training well, eating well, and it's putting yourself first, okay? I've done podcasts on this. This is not a full 30-minute conversation on that, even though I could talk about that for hours. Number five, set boundaries of who has access to you. Your energy and your time is the most valuable assets that you have. Treat it accordingly. If you had all this wealth and all this assets, you might have properties, you might have money, you might have stocks, whatever it may be, would you just let everyone have access to it? Absolutely not. So you make sure you set boundaries of who has access to you so you can use your energy and time accordingly. Because if you've got a purpose that you're chasing, if you've got things you want to do, if you've got people that you want to spend time with and connect with, you've only got a certain amount of time and energy per day to invest that. So invest that accordingly. So set boundaries on who has access to you and who you spend your time and energy with. Number six, ties straight into that one. So be selfish to be selfless. Fill up your own cup so you can pour from a full cup. So again, they kind of tie into each other. You can see how these all link into each other. But set your boundaries, guys, and then be selfish to be selfless. When someone hits you up and say, hey, you want to come out for a party? You want to come hang out? You want to come do this? You want to come do that? Whatever. Instead of just saying, yeah, cool, that sounds sick. Easiest, easiest strategy I've ever found to do this. So simple. Make sure you use a calendar. Grab Google Calendar or some form of a calendar that you use. And whenever... Someone asked you to do something or, hey, come catch up with this. Hey, do you want to do this? Hey, you should come do this. Before you say yes to it, just say, awesome, let me just check my calendar and let me get back to you. Because then you can go back and say, okay, well, that day I've got four clients. I've got this. I've got a date with my partner. 
if I squeeze this in and say yes to that, I'm just going to burn myself out too much. And I just don't really want to do that. So just make sure you are very, very conscious of your energy, of your time, and you're being selfish. You got to pour from a full cup. I love this quote. When you are not pouring from a full cup, say you're at 40%. So you haven't been looking after yourself. You're not training well. You're not eating well. You're not looking after your values. You're not prioritizing your own growth, whatever it may be. And you're at 40%. Even if you give all of what you've got, it's only 40%. So you're being the best version of your limited self. Hear what I just said. You're being the best version of your limited self. So again, prioritize it. What's important to you? Just to give you a quick little rundown on how to do that. What are your values? And that, and, then, and some people have a very, very, very misconception of values. They say, I value honesty and loyalty and respect. Those are not fucking values. Those are human traits and human characteristics. Those are not values. Values are areas of your life that you prioritize. You think about them, you do them, you spend time doing them, you spend money on them. You live and demonstrate your values. Honesty is the funniest one. People say, I value honesty. I say, great. When was the last time you lied? <laughs> and they, they laugh. I say, put your hand up if you've lied before. Everyone has. So yes, we do appreciate honesty and it's probably a trait that we look for in people, which is great, but you don't value it unless you're studying the art of communication, the art of honesty, how to tell when someone's been honest or not. And you become like someone who does lie detecting as a job because you really are curious on honesty. Then yes, you might value honesty, but for 99% of you, it's not going to be the case. It's, you value, it might be family, it might be travel, it might be your career, it might be wealth, it might be health, it might be singing, it might be learning, it might be teaching. It's things that you do, it's things you think about, it's things you demonstrate. So I won't go down the values track, I've done many podcasts on that. But be selfish to be selfless, you figure out your values and you schedule them into your calendar. So I've got time for me coaching. I have time for me learning. I have time for my partner. I have time for my health. I have time for my family. I have time for my games. I do things that are meaningful to me because they fill my cups up, okay? So I hope you really got something from that. Let's keep moving forward. Number seven, your inability to love someone else is a direct reflection of your inability to love yourself. You can only love someone else to the level that you love yourself. So if you are struggling to really connect and build a really deep, meaningful relationship, I would firstly start with you. What's your level of self-love like? And I know that can sound a bit cringe for some people that aren't into this world, but it's absolutely true. Do you really accept and love and own all parts of yourself? Or do you have shame around yourself? Do you have guilt around yourself? Do you judge yourself? Do you beat yourself up? This ties back into doing inner work and learning to heal and accept and love those parts of yourself. But if you're struggling to give love authentically to someone else, chances are your self-love is terrible and your self-worth is terrible. So work on you. Number eight ties straight into that point. The most amount of spiritual and emotional growth you'll ever do will be in an intimate relationship. Now, I find this really interesting. This fascinates the shit out of me. But when you're in an intimate relationship, that person is going to see more sides of you than anyone else. If that person allows you to feel vulnerable and safe enough to be vulnerable, that's a bit of a disclaimer there. But that person's going to see you more than anyone else, depending on your work schedule and all that stuff. But they're going to see more sides of you, your weirdness, your quirkiness, your authentic side, the parts that you probably have a little bit, bit of shame around, a little bit of guilt around. And by having someone shine that light and put that awareness on those parts of you that you haven't learned to love, you haven't learned to accept yet, it allows you to heal. Because healing is a lot putting awareness on. Because the judgment upon our parts of us that we don't really love and accept is what actually gives it power and actually controls us. Because a lot of us are walking through life with a bag full of shit, a bag full of trauma, a bag full of history, a bag full of wounds that we're ashamed of and we have guilt around and we're not proud to have. And a lot of the healing work is literally taking that bag off opening it up, putting awareness on it and starting to process that. But most people are scared to do that because it's emotional, it brings up some shit, it's uncomfortable, I get it. But again, that's why it's so, it's catch 22. Avoid the pain of doing the work, but then the, the, that will cause you to be triggered, to be egocentric, to be unauthentic, to ruin relationships, to ruin your business. So that's why it's so crucial to do that. 
and your partner, your intimate partner, is going to do the most amount of work there because they're going to, just by context of being with you so often and seeing parts of you that no one else sees, they're going to shine those light or shine the light on those parts of you. So you're going to do the most amount of healing in a relationship. So my highest recommendation for that is learn to be conscious of when you're triggered, learn to regulate your emotions, learn to actually ask the right questions. Mm, I mean, that's curious. I'm curious. I just got triggered right now or you just got triggered a lot right now. Let's hold space. Let's regulate. Let's not turn this into a huge argument, but let's actually ask the questions. Where's that coming from? Why did you get triggered so much right then? Where, what, what have you been through that's getting triggered right now? And let's heal through that. And again, I have process and systems and, and ways of doing that for people if you're interested in doing that. So that's the next, uh, next one. That was number eight. Number nine, your big, the biggest decision you'll ever make is who your life partner is, okay? Kind of obviously tying straight into what I'm talking about. It, there's these graphs that I saw recently and it's the amount of time that you spend with people as you get older. And it's like the time with your friends and your family and your, uh, and your employees or your team or just anyone. Every single person besides your intimate partner shot down so much. So like the time you spend with friends that you have right now or people you hang out with right now, as you get older, it's going to get less and less and less. But the only person, your intimate partner, it's going to go up and up and up significantly, especially as you get towards your older years. So that person that you hang out with the most more than anyone else is by far the most important decision that you're going to make. So guys, take the time with it. Ask the right questions. What's your vision? What's your purpose? What's their vision? What's their purpose? What are, your, what are each other's values? Are you guys compatible with each other? Are you guys going to support each other with each other's visions and missions? You don't have to have the same vision. You don't have to have the same mission as each other, but you have to have alignment with where you're going and be wanting to support and challenge each other to get to where you both want to get to. That's a conversation for another day. Number 10, your business, relationship, health, and life is 100% completely your responsibility because this ties into the next point. I'll go straight into point number 11. When you blame someone else for your life, you give your, your, you give your power away to do something about it. So if we go to those two steps, your whole life is a reflection of you. If your business is shit, if your relationship is shit, that's from you. And do not blame anyone else. Do not give your power away because step uh, lesson number 11 is when you blame you literally give your power away to do something about it. If you say my relationship or my business or my life or my whatever is this person's fault, then that person has control over you. They have power over you. I'm not saying what you've been through is your fault. You might've come through a bad upbringing. You might've had some tough challenges. Life would have thrown you some curveballs. I'm not saying that's your fault, what you've been through, however, how you respond is your responsibility. And if you look at the word respond and responsibility, it's your ability to respond. Responsibility, your ability to respond. So do not blame. As soon as you blame your business partner, your friends, your family, your partner, your parents, your upbringing, the government, the weather, COVID, whenever you blame anything for your life, you're giving your power away. Yes, Things are going to go wrong. There's injustice out there. There are people that take advantage of people. There are people that are, are horrible people. That's life. But if you're blaming them for your circumstances and your life, you are giving your power away to do something about it. So that was number 11. Number 12, if your circle of friends don't make you better, you need better friends. Pretty self-explanatory. You've heard the thing you become who you hang with, you're the average of the five people that you associate with. It's very true. So if your friends or the people in your circle are not making you better, you need better friends. Go put yourself out there. Reach out to people on social media. Connect with people. Go to meetup events. Go to seminars. Go to courses. Go to places of where the people you want to be around are probably hanging around. If you want to be a healthier person, go to the gym. Meet people at the gym. If you want to be more into your business, go to business development events and meet people that are doing the same thing. Get yourself better friends, guys. Last three. Number 13, life is always happening for you, not to you. You've probably heard this a trillion times before. One of the most overused quotes in self-development, it's absolutely true. 
everything is on the way, not in the way. And until you see it that way and you blame and you play victim, you stay in that time. But if you see the problems that you're going through and the pain that you're getting in life as feedback and lessons to help you evolve and help you grow into the person you wanna be to have the life you wanna have, life is happening for you, my friend. I guarantee that to you. Number 14, this is my favorite one. Life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal the wounds that you haven't healed through. This ties back to the one we're talking about doing the inner work and healing through your wounds. Whenever you're triggered, it's going to reveal wounds you haven't healed through. So when you are triggered, you've attracted someone, (coughs) excuse me, you've attracted someone or something that's going to trigger you. Two seconds. (coughs) Just choked on something. So... You're going, to tri- you're going to attract that person that triggers you. You're going to attract something that triggers that part in you that you haven't healed through. So when life, which ties into the, the number 13 lesson, life's happening for you, not to you, whoever is there to trigger you is helping you heal. There's a line I use all the time. Whoever triggers you the most in life will heal you the most in life because they're shining lights upon those parts and those bits of yourself that you might have shame around that you haven't processed yet, that you haven't learned to love yet. So those people that are triggering you are giving you the opportunity to heal through those wounds. So again, life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal the wounds that you haven't healed through. My last step, my last lesson for my 26-year-old self, in a thousand years, everything you do or achieve will be forgotten. Do what's fulfilling to you, it's your life. We get so caught up, and I'm so, so guilty of this, of achievement, making the money, having the success, having the status, having the, the, the title, and impressing people. And it's all out of insecurity. It's all out of ego. I'm not saying don't chase goals. I'm not saying don't have ambition. I'm not saying go crush your goals and make money and all that stuff. Please go do that. But if you're doing it, out of a void that's inside of you, no amount of fucking money is going to fill that. You are going to chase a mirage where you set a goal and you chase it and you hit it because you're a high achiever, well done, but that ain't gonna fill you up. And then you're like, oh shit, okay, it wasn't that number. It, it was a bigger number and you chase that number and then you hit it and then you're still empty on the inside. So you set a bigger number and that game continues, continues, continues. Again, don't take it to the extreme and not set goals. Set goals. Have things that are meaningful to you. Chase them relentlessly, viciously. Do that good stuff. But if you're doing it out of desperation, not inspiration, you're doing it out of insecurity, not who you authentically are, then you're going to never feel that void that's inside of you. Understand that you are fucking perfect and beautiful and loved exactly the way that you are right now watching this, listening to this. You don't need a fucking amount of money in your car, your bank account to be good enough. You don't need a certain car to be loved. You don't have to have a certain fucking achievement to deserve the love from your parents or your partner or, or society or religion, whatever it may be. We are absolutely perfect and beautiful exactly the way that we are right now. And in that state of mind, chase your goals relentlessly. The most powerful place to be in life is to know exactly what it is that you desire to have and be totally detached from actually having it. Listen to what I just said just then. Know what you want. Be fucking crystal clear on your vision, on your purpose, on your mission, on your values. Do all of that stuff. Know what you want. Have a plan to get there. Chase it viciously, relentlessly, but be so detached from actually achieving it. Because if you don't, all you do, it's not gonna make you happy anyways. Being content and whole and looking after you and doing what's meaningful to you and finding joy in what it is that you do, that's how you have a beautiful life. Guys, that is it for my video. Thank you for listening to my birthday podcast. I hope you guys got value from it. It's obviously not gonna be live on my birthday. It's gonna be a couple days later. But guys, thank you so much. I hope you got value from it. If you want to comment down below your favorite takeaway, your favorite lesson, I'll read through them quickly for you just to rehash them for you. So number one, always be investing into yourself to become the best version of you. Heal, number two, heal from your past wounds. They are causing you to be triggered and unauthentic. Number three, find your purpose, chase it relentlessly. Number four, 
your depression or my depression and anxiety is not solved by medications. It's solved by doing the inner work, looking after my health and putting myself first. Number five, set boundaries of who have, who has access to you. Number six, be selfish to be selfless. Fill up your cup so you can pour from a full cup. Number seven, your inability to love someone else is a direct reflection of your inability to love yourself. Number eight, the most amount of spiritual and emotional growth you'll ever do will be in an intimate relationship. Number nine, the biggest decision you'll ever make is who your life partner is. Number 10, your business, relationship, health, and life is 100% completely your responsibility. Number 11, when you blame someone else for your life, you give your power away to do something about it. Number 12, I think I might've got my numbers wrong. Number 12, your, um, if your circle of friends don't make you better, you need better friends. Go surround yourself with better people. Number 13, life is always happening for you, not to you. Remember that, repeat that to yourself. Number 14, life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal the wounds that you haven't healed through. Number 15, in a thousand years, everything you do or achieve will be forgotten. Do what's fulfilling to you, it's your life. Thank you for listening, guys. Enjoy your day, enjoy your life, do what you love, find your purpose. If you're interested in working with me with any of this stuff that we've been talking about today, send me a DM or go to the link in the caption of this. There is a free strategy call only for people that are willing and ready to invest into themselves. Don't book in if you're not ready to do that. Guys, thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful life. Send this to a friend. Help add some value to them as well. See you soon.